Hello friends, it's The Stitches. Much like I said in my last sewing vlog, I've decided to focus on using the fabric that already exists in my fabric stash before I buy anything new. This project is only partially following that little self-imposed rule, but I've had this black velvet in my fabric stash for about half a year now, and I've known the whole time that I wanted to make a vest out of it. Mostly because I only have a little over half a yard, and a vest front is basically the only thing I can squeeze out of this amount of fabric. Also like my last sewing vlog, this velvet was fished out of a remnant bin and was originally quite expensive, so there will be no purchasing of additional velvet. I have another vest pattern that I made from scratch by draping muslin on my dress form, but I wanted to work with a slightly different shape for this vest. I also wanted it to be a bit longer, so I decided to alter the vest from this vintage suit pattern that I picked up at a thrift store. The biggest downside to getting vintage patterns is that they only come in one size, and you can't exactly pick out your size when you get them at thrift stores. So unfortunately, this pattern is a couple sizes too big, which means I have to make a mock-up to resize it. But at least it's much easier to downsize a pattern than it is to upsize a pattern. The previous owner of this pattern never cut out the vest pieces, so that was my first step. I swear cutting out commercial patterns can sometimes take just as long as actually sewing your garment. After getting all my pattern pieces together and cut out, I pulled out my muslin scraps. I don't have a reason to keep my mock-ups for personal projects, so I usually take them apart after I'm done with them so I can reuse the muslin. I also have a roll of unused muslin on hand, but I didn't really wind up needing it. Here's my cut pieces. I didn't film myself stitching up the muslin because it just seems boring and unnecessary because you'll see me make the finished vest, but here's me trying on the original pattern. I pinned the seams that I'll be making changes to. The length and overall shape of the garment was fine, I just needed to take in the side seams and slightly reshape the princess seams on the front pieces to reduce the chest size. I marked where I needed to reshape my pattern pieces with a sharpie so I could measure the amount of reduction needed. I also wanted to add a seam to the back piece to make adding some details I wanted a little bit easier. Since there was already a dart, I just continued the line from the dart up to the shoulder, removing the bit of fabric that would have been folded in. After creating the new seam, since this pattern has seam allowance built in, I added 5 eighths of an inch along the new edge. And my updated pattern pieces look quite a bit different from the base pattern. Here's my second mock-up, and you can see that it's a lot closer fitting and more flattering. I decided to use hook and eye closures for the front of the vest instead of buttons, so my final vest won't overlap in the front like you can see here. But at this point, I'm ready to move forward and start working with some fashion fabric. Since I only have enough velvet to cut out the front pieces, I obviously need a coordinating fabric for the back and lining pieces. I love the look of a satin back on vests, plus it also makes it easier to layer with jackets and blazers because the jacket fabric can more easily glide over the satin than it would a cotton or other non-slippery fabric. So I got some black satin and some cording, which I'll explain the purpose of later on. I also want to put some boning in my seams for a super clean looking silhouette. I'm using what's called sanded satin. It has a really nice textured look to it, which I think pairs well with the velvet. Now that I have my pattern and fabrics ready, it's time to cut out my pieces. My front lining will have a bit of facing that I cut from the velvet. This piece will be backed with some light interfacing to add some stability to the front closures. Once everything is cut out, it's time to prep my fabric pieces to get them ready to stitch together. The first thing I'm going to do is cut some 3 inch segments from my cording so I can create a corset style lacing detail in the back of the vest. Normally, I would use a lighter to burn the ends of these pieces to keep them from fraying, but... Uh, that didn't exactly work. This is a synthetic fiber, but I guess it isn't a particularly melty type of synthetic fiber. Despite the fact that I was fairly positive I had picked out a polyester cording, so it should have melted. 
I still really didn't want to risk letting my pieces fall apart before I had a chance to secure them, so I taped the edges instead. Once the cording is stitched down, I can cut away the taped bits. My 3-inch segments will create loops that I'll attach to the back of the vest. Starting 2 inches from the bottom edge, I pinned them down every inch or so. When my vest is finished, I'll be able to use my remaining length of cording to thread through the loops and create my lacing. I took this over to the sewing machine and stitched down my loops inside the seam allowance. Then the taped ends are no longer necessary. I also finished the edges of this piece by running it through the serger, so now the loops are not only secure but also highly unlikely to fray and fall off my vest. Ironing velvet can be tricky, and especially so when you're like me and don't work with velvet enough to justify owning a pinboard. But a slightly less effective hack is to use a piece of scrap velvet as a rudimentary ironing surface instead. Just use the pile of the scrap velvet to prevent yourself from crushing the pile of your garment pieces by ironing them with the right sides together. You still don't want to press down too hard, but it's better than nothing, and it allowed me to iron my inner facing to my front facing piece for my lining. Next, I serged the edges of the rest of my fabric pieces. This isn't strictly necessary, as there is a lining and I'll have to notch some of the curves anyway, but it will be helpful to keep my fabric, the satin especially, from fraying while I construct my garment. It'll also be useful when I use my seam allowance to create channels for my boning later on. Now, I'm finally ready to pin my pieces together. To make things easy for myself, I pinned all my side seams together so that I could stitch them all at once. It's much faster to pin as much as you can and then stitch as much as you can as opposed to going back and forth between pinning and stitching for each individual seam. And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Once my side seams are all joined, I'm left with two pieces, my outer vest fabric and my lining. You'll notice I haven't stitched my shoulder seams. I'm leaving those open for when I stitch these two big pieces together so I have a way to turn it right side out. Now it's time to press all my seams. On my outer vest fabric, instead of pressing the seam allowance open like I normally would, I pressed the seam allowance to the side I want my boning channel to be created on. Then I carefully pinned my seam allowance in place so it wouldn't move around. At the sewing machine, I made two rows of stitching, one as close to the seam line as possible, and another at the outer edge of the seam allowance itself. This will leave me with a channel big enough for my quarter inch boning. I know black stitching on black fabric isn't the easiest to capture, but hopefully it shows well enough on my footage that you can see my finished stitching lines. For my lining fabric, I just pressed the seam allowance open like normal. Before I inserted my boning, I pinned the vest lining to the outer fabric along the vest front and bottom hem, making sure to match my seams. I also pinned along the neckline on the back of the vest. For now, I'll be leaving the arms eye open, as well as the shoulder seams. Once the pinned sections were stitched, I clipped notches out of the curved bits so that the hem would lay more smoothly once the garment is turned. At the beginning of the vlog, I showed you some half-inch featherweight boning, but I decided I wanted something a bit thinner and stiffer pretty much immediately. Also, I didn't have enough of it for all my seams anyway. Instead, I'm using this quarter-inch normal weight boning that comes wrapped in this black fabric. Since I made channels with my seam allowance already, I won't actually be needing the fabric that comes with the boning to attach it to my vest, so it can just be discarded. After sliding the boning into the channels, I was sure to cut my pieces an inch shorter than the length of the channel. That way I have enough room to continue stitching, turning, and top stitching my vest hem. Then the lower curve of the arm size are pinned. I left a few inches open at the top. This will make it easier to stitch the shoulders after the vest is turned. At the sewing machine, I was careful to only stitch the pinned section. After cutting notches out of the arm's eye curves, it's time to turn the vest right side out. The boning makes this a tiny bit tricky, so I was extra gentle while tugging my fabric to assure nothing was bent. I also used a corner press to push out the sharp points at the front of the vest. 
This will need a thorough press to get all the hems nice and crisp, although it doesn't appear that I recorded that process. The next step can be a bit tricky to visualize, but all I'm doing is pinning the shoulder seam right sides together. This is stitched in place at the machine. So now I'm left with an opening along the arm's eye. Once the seam allowance on the shoulder seams are pressed open and the arm's eye seam allowance pressed in, all I have to do is hand stitch the opening closed. This is easiest to accomplish while the vest is on a form, since the fabric will naturally want to curve, but obviously that part is optional. Top stitching along the hem isn't necessary, but I personally like how it looks. The very last thing I need to do is add some method of securing the vest on the front. I used these silver-toned hook and eye style closures. I just marked where I wanted the closures with some pins, measuring with a seam gauge to ensure they're equal distances apart. Then I hand stitched them to the front of the vest. The closures have a few little holes in them that are meant to be whip stitched through. Now my closures are nice and secure, and the cording has been threaded through my loops in the back of the vest to create some lacing that I can use to adjust the fit. Although, the lacing is mostly decorative. And with that, the project is finished. I'm super pleased with how my vest turned out. It's been a while since I made something that was this structured. I can't actually remember the last time I made something from scratch that required boning. I really wish black clothing was more photogenic, but I tried to get a few detail shots anyway. I guess the cool thing about sewing black garments is that if you make mistakes, it's harder to see them. And much like I've been doing in my last few sewing vlogs, I have some coordinates that I put together using this vest. For my first look, I have a very OG-inspired outfit. I paired the vest with these charcoal bloomers that I updated in my bloomer coordination video. The black velvet ribbon on them matches the velvet that my vest is made from. And of course, we all knew that I could not get through a single video without using this Baby the Starshine Bright blouse. I thought about adding a pop of color at the neck, but instead decided to keep my outfit monochrome by using an off-white silk scarf. For my next outfit, I'll also be using a monochrome color scheme. I wanted to layer the vest with a blazer, so I went with this houndstooth set, which isn't really a set, but I like to pretend that it is. I bought the blazer and tennis skirt at two completely different thrift stores, and the houndstooth is two different sizes, but they pair well enough that I really enjoy wearing them together. I've also layered a simple white button-up shirt underneath. The solid black and white basics create a really pleasing color block effect with the black and white houndstooth. And now for something completely different. This time I've layered the vest over a sheer long sleeve top and lots of jewelry. I've taken these plaid suspender shorts that I also made in a previous video, removed the suspenders, and instead clipped on some pocket chains, since I wanted this look to have lots of hardware. I also have my platform ankle boots on because I do, in fact, wish I was a little bit taller. That's all for today's video. I hope it was either mildly entertaining or maybe gave you some sewing or outfit coordination ideas. If you watched this while working on your own sewing projects, feel free to let me know what you're working on in the comments down below. And with that, I hope everyone has a good day and I'll see you all next time. Bye.